Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast. I'm really happy to bring it to you today. And I've got Kevin here. Say hi, Kevin. Hey, how are you doing, David? Great, great, great. For those of you who don't know, Kevin's my co-host on the show. And it's really great having a co-host on the show. I must say, it just makes it more conversational and stops me rambling on about things and getting to the point. And Kevin asks great questions that kind of hopefully extract some more juicy value out for you guys. Well, that, that, uh, you make it very easy to do that because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm also a learner on this side of the mic. So um, awesome. I'm looking forward to the episode today. No, excellent. So today's episode, I think, is going to be quite useful for a lot of people. Um, it's a question I get asked a lot. And what are my options for rework when my products fail inspection? And um, for those of you who aren't doing inspections on your products before they leave the factory in China, um, that's a big no-no. You really need to be doing your inspections. Um, and we can talk about that. You can always give me a call if you guys don't understand what that means. But before anything ships out of China, out the factory, you've got to send people in, check the goods before they ship. Now, every just to give you some kind of background of some of the questions I get asked around this is, because um, I think there's a misunderstanding in the industry really, um, Kevin. And, you know, I kind of get asked things like, um, should I inspect my products? What do I do if my products fail inspection? You know, why would my products fail inspection? Um, should I even expect them to fail inspection? And, and just what do I do? You know, if they fail, what are my options really? How do I deal with this? So hopefully I'm going to address some of those topics today and give some practical advice. Well, I, I am, like I said, I'm looking forward to, uh, to diving into this a little more because, um, and before we get started, how often, you know, give me an, a kind of a ballpark about the percentage of how many shipments, you know, would you say would fail on a percentage basis? Um, Kevin, I would say almost every inspection we do on our product, there's always something that we kind of revert to what we call a commercial decision. So, um, you know, we always expect there's going to be something that we pick up because it's just not a perfect world. Factories make mistakes. There's always production problems or some type of issue. Um, so I think every inspection we do, there's what you call some fail points and some pending points. Really what happens then is we take that information that we get reported back from the inspectors and we have to start looking at it and making some decisions. Now, um, firstly, the, the first kind of things we ask ourselves are, is, is it a safety concern um, or is it just a, what we call kind of a, a minor or major issue? And I, maybe I should just touch on that a little bit. You know, every inspection you do, you get a list of findings, right? Issues that the inspectors picked up and found wrong with the product based on the tests and checks that they're going to do. And they'll report those findings in. And the important thing is just to really classify those findings and say, is it a major issue or is it a minor issue? And then you make commercial decisions based around that. So, you know, for example, um, if you if you've got a product uh, that there's a safety problem, you know, maybe it's overheating, for example, when you're checking and testing it, that could really be a safety issue or a liability issue. So you've got to deal with it. Um, if it's a, a minor scratch on the surface of the product, you might look at that and go, well, it's not ideal, um, but we have to, we're going to deal, we, we, we're going to commercially release it. And, that, and that's kind of a, a phrase that we use a lot because you never want to go and say, okay, um, this point, this findings failed and we're passing it now and accepting it because that's kind of setting the precedent. What you really want to say and, you know, use that terminology with the factories. Okay. We're not happy about this, but we're doing a commercial release and we're doing a commercial release means it doesn't make sense to hold the shipment back. It doesn't make sense to rework it. Um, and, you know, based on time, cost, or maybe handling the goods again, it's just going to do more damage than good. So you say, well, if it's really minor, we just make a commercial release. We're going to accept it this time, but we want a running change on the next order um, or the next production run. Um, so kind of that's the first decision you, you need really need to make is do you just do a commercial release or not? Now, just on that, you know, I want to say, it's not uncommon. I get so many people say, Oh, it's failed inspection. It's a disaster. What am I going to do? Uh, you know, it's normal. <laughs> it's really normal, right? What matters is how, what, how you treat it 
and how you make those commercial decisions. And it's not always a case of being um, too difficult with the manufacturer. I think you've got to do, be practical. You know, sometimes to unpack a package and unbox everything is a lot of handling and that can really sometimes do more damage than good. So if it's something really minor, um, you've got to determine what the risk to your business is and then do an either do a commercial release or do a rework. So I think, Kevin, some of the things that, you know, I get asked a lot is, well, what are your options if it is a major problem? Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, I just kind of run through a couple of things. There's two things. There's, there's two scenarios, I should say. The one scenario is um, products fail during inspection. It's still at the factory in China. And then there's a scenario where you pick up a problem in your home country or after the goods have shipped. And those are really two different scenarios. Right. From my point of view, if you catch something at the factory before it ships is the best case scenario. You'd much rather want the factory to rework the goods before they ship than having to deal with it in your home country. It's going to be a lot more expensive. You might not have the materials. It's just going to take a lot of time and you might even have the experience or expertise. So just getting it done at the factory is always the best case. And when those kind of events happen, you want to just deal with it right there and then get the factory to rework it. Now, so the way I look at it, your options are really make the factory rework the goods if they can. If it's something major or really important to you, make the factory rework the goods. Um, they can rework it in a number of ways, depending on what the problem is. You talk to them, you negotiate with them, you get their view on how to fix it in a quick, fast and easy way. I think it's very important to maintain your relationship with the factory through these processes because it does cost them time and money and not to get upset that, oh, you guys did this bit wrong to me and you get all emotional about it. It really doesn't solve the problem. Um, what you really want to do is work with them to fix it, to find the most cost-effective way to rework it and maintain the relationship because you want to have a good relationship with your suppliers. Mm -hmm. Don't try and be that tough guy that says, I don't care. I want it a hundred percent. I'm not taking this because you, normally you're going to come off short. Just be as practical as possible and make sure they do things, you know, better the next time around. Um, and, and it's really, really not uncommon. Is that more true in the area of the world you're working in? I mean, is it, is it more true in, in say East Asia than it would be in other parts of the world to really kind of, not not come off as this you know kind of the the jerk that wants them to completely redo everything and yelling and screaming and being the tough guy yeah. you know motif whatever so i i think i think it happens everywhere and and there really is this misconception that oh um if it's not perfect i'm not going to take it yeah. and you, you just can't do that you've got to make commercial decisions you've mm -hmm. got to accept running changes if something's kind of minor let it go um you know, another thing we do a lot is sometimes we request um, discounts. So mm -hmm. sometimes we might say, okay, you know what, rather than rework it, just give me a couple of percent off um, and I'll deal with it in my country or, you know, be practical about things. Um, we've, in many cases, also managed to get um, suppliers to give us free stock because we feel there's going to be replacement issues or something right. like that. Or if it's packaging, we say, okay, I'll print extra packaging, we'll swap some out. Um, Another thing we often do with manufacturers, and this is, I think, great advice for everyone listening, is we sign declarations of conformity and warranty with the manufacturers. So what that means is sometimes we'll pick up a problem with um, a product, or it might be kind of a, a bit of a um, matter of opinions. We think it's not a good situation. They might say it's actually not a problem at all. Um, and it's something we can't really check or verify because it takes time. You know, the best stress test of quality is time, right? Sure. Reliability yeah. is fundamentally how long does something last? So there's just no way you can inspect that. You know, my favorite saying, Kevin, is you can't inspect quality into a product. You know, there's no inspection is going to make it a good quality product. It's got to be right. produced with quality. And um, so sometimes what we'll manage to negotiate with factories, and I encourage people to try to do that, is create a declaration of conformity and warranty, which says, okay, you know, Mr. Factory, if you think this is right, you know, I'm not hundred percent sure. I can't say with certainty it's going to be a problem, but I feel uncomfortable about it. 
would you give me a declaration of conformity or warranty and warranty to state that you will undertake that if I have a problem on this issue in the market, you'll facilitate a return or a rework or some type of compensation. And we use that a lot um, in terms of materials mm -hmm. because some, you can't always test the material, right? You, you just can't tell unless you take a sample into labs and go into a lot more detail. So what we'll do is we'll have the manufacturer give a declaration and make that undertaking that this is correct. We've used the right materials or you won't have a problem related to this issue. And if you do, we're accountable. And that's actually, by the way, a declaration of conformity and warranty, if you do it right, is actually a legal binding document in China. Most people don't understand that. Not that you're going to litigate in China. It's, a, it's another nightmare. But it's, it's something that takes pretty seriously. Right. And it, it gives you a certain, I, I guess, assurance or, or comfort level, you know, moving forward with the product as well, I would think. It, 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 exactly. And, you know, I always like to wrap these shows up by kind of reflecting on these different scenarios um, and kind of say, is it a success or is it a failure, mm. right? Um, the kind of j these journeys. And I, and I think really a product failing inspection is not a failure at all. And I don't want people to feel that. I don't want the guys listening um, to think, oh, my product failed. I'm get all nervous and get all worried. The best case scenario is to identify as many problems before it leaves a factory in China, make sure, double check, get it fixed, or just know what you're dealing with. Because once it's shipped, it's way too late. So a product failing inspection is not a terrible thing. It's how you deal with it and how you manage it thereafter that's really important. And if you are, I just want to say this like very clearly, if you are, um, if, if there is a major problem, then you do need to get the factory to rework the goods. And, and you don't, don't be shy about that. You know, just encourage them and motivate them. You want their support to do it. Don't try to have that iron fist hammer. You will do this, you will do that. Because they're going to run away. It, it costs them time and money. And all you want to do is not have a blaming game, but have them motivated to help you. And that's really important. Yeah, and I, I think as as a vendor, you know, you want to have a relationship where they're they're you virtually view them as a business partner in this endeavor exactly. with you, not just a, you know, a vendor. I'm paying somebody and they're doing whatever I my bit my bidding, so to speak. But it, I really exactly. love the idea that, you know, be creative on how you resolve the the issue. What whatever the remedy is for the problem that. You know, it's yeah. not just a, it's not black or white. It's not zero or a hundred. I mean, there, there, there are other alternatives like you mentioned. So I really exactly. like that. And, and don't say pass or fail. Sometimes you say commercially release. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I say, I guess the other really big takeaway for me is you can't inspect quality into a product. It's got to be designed and built like that from the beginning. And um, my next episode, actually, I'll give a quick highlight to everybody listening is actually all about accountability. And a lot of that is around about how you front load that information and how at the end of the day, you're ultimately accountable. But that's a whole other episode. I hope you guys enjoy this and listen. And uh, the next episode is going to be all about accountability and why you're usually wrong and not the manufacturer. So that's going to be a good one to listen out for.